Here we are on the hills overlooking Malaga and Spain at the launch of the Jeep Avenger, European Car of the Year 2023. This has already been on my channel where I saw it at the eCar Expo in Sweden. But today we're here with the gold color, uh, which was the one that was used on launch. Got a lot more details. The one thing I don't have today is price. So if that's something that you're looking for, hold tight, keep an eye on socials, that price will be coming out. But we're going to run through the outside, the inside and take it out for a drive as well. Aesthetically, I think they've done a, a phenomenal job with this car, even though, would you believe it's the same size footprint as an Corsa E. So the length is just over four meters, the width is about 1.75, 78, and height is just about 1.5. So dimensions wise, they've just taken that Jeep DNA and really shrunken it down. And there's a lot of positives about this car. Starting off at the front, you've got the signature seven slots for Jeep and they're closed off because as a battery electric vehicle, uh, it doesn't need that much cooling going on. There is some air in underneath. A lot of little Easter eggs around the place because it's the first edition, you've got this lovely little Jeep hat tip. It's in the giant Jeep Wrangler icon and there's lots of stuff pointed out around it. There is air in underneath. There is a um, radar sensor, etc. Uh, headlights are lovely, they've got the daytime running light, DRLs at the top and then the high low beam module and their LED as well. You've got LED on this top trim and what you will see is that there is a envelope of black plastic around every single part of this car and that's all to do with maintenance, scuffs, wear and tear in that Jeep. This one was on a dirt road about an hour ago, hence why it's still dusty. I think that's what Jeep needs to be. Uh, you've got the fog lights on this, but what we find is, and what they were very keen to point out is, everything that's um, like that fog light is recessed. So there's a, a black, or sorry, a, a, an envelope of gray plastic that goes around the whole car so that you're not going to be um, getting worried about hitting it or scraping or something else hitting against it. There is no frunk, but I will show you what, look, what that looks like inside. It is a fairly compact unit and it's the new um, e-motor from the Stellantis Group and it is a partnership. Uh, wheels come in 16, 17s and 18s and these are the 18 launch editions. There is um, parking sensors. You can see that cladding, that trapezoid shape around the wheel arch. You've got some really lovely sculpted, making it really squat looking on the road. Glass black with the built-in indicator and they're retractable. You've got the Avenger with that blue highlight in the, in, a, in, a, in the back of the lettering. You've got that large scuff plate all the way along with some Jeep lang uh, language at the bottom here. Body color door handles, gloss black roof. Comes in seven different colors. On my other video, it was kind of that, that lovely teal blue called Lake. I think this is called Sun. Very good, nice and simple. You've got the door handle up at the back here. You've got your charging port. So this is the new 54 kilowatt hour battery, 50.8, nearly 51 kilowatts of that is usable. So there's a dramatic increase in range and range for the Jeep Avenger is gonna be, they're saying WLTP 400 kilometers and WLTP for urban, that's combined. And then for urban, they're saying, if you drive this right, you will get 550 kilometers of range. Charging on AC, it's 11 kilowatts, and on DC, up to 100 kilowatts, with an average across that charging curve of 85 uh, kilowatts. The, uh, on, on a 7 kilowatt wall box like we have in the UK and Ireland, it would take about eight hours to fill up. Being a squat B-segment SUV in that Jeep format, um, air, aerodynamics is not its strong point. It's 0.33 drag coefficient, which isn't bad, they say, with a frontal area of 2.25. If you're interested in all things EV and you'd like to support the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future updates. Here on the back of the Jeep Avenger, you've got your gloss black shark fin aerial, you've got your high level brake light, you've got your window wiper, and you can see this has been through a bit of a sandy road and we're gonna talk about the different terrain modes that are in there. Nice big Jeep um, language. You've got that uh, electric anodized blue that we would have seen on Citroen and other Stellantis brands. You've got this cross um, that Jeep are calling the signature taillight for them. It's supposed to rem uh, remind people of the Jerry Can kind of indentations, lovely big um, glass lens on that. And again, that bumper and side fending is the first thing that would, something would hit rather than a, an expensive piece of kit like this. Um, on the middle and upper level trims, it is a power tail lift. It is foot activated as well that I didn't try on camera. And you've got 380 liters dual uh, level flow, and you have some space in underneath then for charging cables and tire compressor kit. 
Uh, it's nice that it's nearly flat and the fact that you can drop it down. It's not the biggest, it's about the same size as the Volkswagen ID3. And you've got 60 40 split um, with a parcel shelf, fairly decent parcel shelf as well. Yeah, it, it's practical, you know what I mean? It's not the biggest, but this is a B segment, as I said, when you think about the size, the same size as a, as a Corsa E. And what they've done is they've raised everything up by the ground clearance is 200 millimeters. And so 209 millimeters to uh, suspension information or suspension um, linkages, etc. And then to the battery, it's 230 odd millimeters. So wading depth is 230 odd because it's based on that ECMP2 platform from the Stellantis. What the Jeep designers have done is they've taken that and put in 60% specific to the Jeep Avenger. So this isn't taking bits from the parts bin. There's a lot of stuff here that you're not going to get in any other Stellantis like the Mach E or the likes of the 2008. So what they've done is they've taken the actual crash boxes front and rear and you can really see the shortness of that overhang there to maximize as much space as they can inside it. So for this size car, the boot that you're getting is, is actually fairly good. With that short overhang as well, you've got a departure angle of 32 degrees and you've got an uh, attack angle of 20 degrees at the front. So you can see from this video here, we filmed uh, at the airport, it really can take those inclines, no problem at all. And that was a 20 degree incline there. With the Jeep Avenger, it comes in four wheel, front wheel drive only at the moment, but we are being told that we will be getting an all wheel drive. And so we're going to be, you can have a Jeep that's only going to be in two wheel drive. So I'm not sure will they put that second motor and will the uh, boot be even more compromised than it is at the moment. It's all speculation. Before we head inside, the weight of the Jeep Avenger is 1,520 odd kilos. So uh, again, for its size, for its bulk, and that's going to help with that efficiency and that range and that WLTP figure. Let's have a look on the inside. Inside the Jeep Avenger, there is some stuff that you'll recognize from the Stellantis group. And so on the door, you've got that, uh, stuff that we would the windows and the side mirror adjustments there's a lot of utilitarian is what i call the jeep avenger there is some soft um cushioning on the elbow on the launch edition we're getting this flash of yellow across no matter what the external color is it's going to be yellow as the the color but it just goes go so well with this gold you've got some again utilitarian plastics over my left and you've got the hill descent which is also something that you don't get in any of your stellantis uh, small suvs you've got your heated windscreen uh, and you also have your headlight level up the steering wheel itself is reach and rake and so it's nice that it has that it's a leather three spoke tactile buttons nice big jeep on the uh, signage on it and behind it on the left hand side is your um lights and indicators on the right hand side you've got your wipers and on the steering wheel itself you've got volume on the right and on the left you've got your cruise control adaptive cruise control depending on the trims and there's four different trim levels there is the avenger edition and then there's lat at altitude longitude latitude summit potentially uh, i'll look at that before uh, i edit this video um you've got a depending on the trim level will dictate the size of the driver clusters which is interesting usually it's the actual infotainment screen that gets upgraded or downgraded but on this entry on this uh, first edition it's 10.25 inch on lower entry on entry level models it's a seven inch nice clean crisp color which is great and then the infotainment screen it's the same across all of them it's 10.25 inches it has fully customizable it has wireless android auto and apple carplay and you can have up to five screens and 12 different widgets per screen now some of the widgets are bigger or smaller but um the fact that there's wireless now myself and mark noble from nobby and cars drove it from the airport the satellite navigation now wouldn't be great it just doesn't zoom out enough so that you can see what turns are coming up so definitely would be recommending the android auto or apple carplay and that satellite navigation is tom tom so i'm a bit surprised at that there's a physical home button car settings central locking and your hazard lights lovely little auxiliary shelf here that you can store stuff in that's where i had my phone when i was a passenger and a driver your start stop button you've got physical volume and you've got your physical hvac uh, toggle switches up and down you've got your park reverse neutral and drive buttons here then you've got this um kind of a tablet foldy flappy thing not bad not great you've got wireless charging in here you've got a two usb type c's and a 12 volt and you've got plenty of storage. You've got that kind of a Jeepy kind of a, you can see the design of it here on the back of the, it's really highlighting the taillights. You've got your electronic handbrake and your drive modes. And on the Jeep Avenger, you have five different drive modes. Turn it on. Uh, and they are 
sport, normal, eco, sand, mud and snow. And the reason this is so dusty is because we were driving it on sand. Like storage wise, you've got your glove box, really deep actually. But this is the left hand drive, so I'm not sure if we're going to get that in the right hand drive markets. Uh, and you've got storage here with some, again, that shape of the taillights, but movable for different size cups. You've got some storage in there and you've got storage. So inside you've got about another 34 litres, about the size of a carry on suitcase. So lots of utilitarian smarts about it. Um, you can, this is uh, the launch edition is kind of like a fabric y kind of a seat. Um, but you will get full leather if you want, you will get electrically adjusted, you will get massage function, but what they've done, is, which is really smart, is that they've said, you know what, for the launch edition, we're not going to put everything on it, we're going to put on the things that we think people want, so you get like different style seats. Uh, there is ambient light on the launch edition, but we won't get the ambient light ends of the dash in right-hand drive markets, which is a kind of an unusual one. No sunroof here as well, but there will be a sunroof available if you want it. You've got a frameless mirror, You've got your um, vanity, but no lights on that vanity either. So this seat, let me just set it for myself. It's on rails. It's set for me. Let's have a seat in the back and see what it's like. Don't forget that the handle is up at the back there. And I had the same situation when I sat on this in Sweden. Headrest now, move that up. You know what? You'd be fine, but you probably could move that seat a bit more forward. There is one USB Type-C in the back. You've got some storage. These seat covers seem to be removable with some zips in it. Really two adults in the back, three smaller people. Isofix in the two rear seats. And I believe there's one in the front as well. I do. Um, and you've got a central headrest. So they're talking about a um, third passenger being here of some sort. There is a transmission tunnel because in certain markets, Italy and Spain, this will come in petrol, but in UK and Ireland, I believe it's only going to come in full electric. So legroom isn't the greatest for me at six foot two, 188 centimeters, but headroom, no problem. Two or three centimeters there. Just that legroom, high support. You probably get away with it. Just so you know, again, think about it. B segment, same as a Corsa, same as a Mokka, same as a 2008. So yeah, space wise, isn't the best in the back, but we kind of know that for this size of car. Let's take it out for a drive. Driving the Jeep Avenger and we're here in the mountains overlooking Malaga and we've got our hill descent as this first thing we're going to do. So you just hold on the button, it says hill descent mode engaged and when it's more than five degrees, I'm not touching the, steer, the, the accelerator there now, it takes the, it doesn't let it roll down the hill. So nice to have that on a B segment all electric SUV. So the different driver modes, you have, we talked about uh, eco, normal sport, sand, mud and snow. We tried out the sand, which was really good, myself and Nobby on cars. Visibility is good, this level has, this entry, first edition has blind spot, um, good big wing mirrors as well. I've always been a, um, a critic of the Stellantis wing mirrors, but this one's, I'm happy with this. Seating position is nice. Uh, and as I said, you can get it electrically adjusted, but this is all manual on the launch edition. Again, not going with too many frills. That would also add weight. That would also add... Um, there's something actually, is the indicator sound. It's like a snare drum. Hopefully you picked it up on the audio. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's a 115 kilowatt motor, giving you 156 brake horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque. I like the steering wheel. Yeah, for a B-segment SUV, that small compact SUV, there's nothing wrong with it. And these are on the 18 inch wheels as well. It comes with the 16 inch steel wheels to start with. Visibility out the back is good as well, even though that center headrest is slightly up there now, whether you'd have somebody in that actual middle seat, potentially not, and if there were, they probably wouldn't need that, heads, um, that headrest extended to the height that it is at the moment, but yeah, it's fairly decent. Because of the height of the Jeep Avenger uh, you're getting, you're not letterboxed down. Accelerator is responsive, brakes are good. 
and it's got two stage regenerative braking so you have D mode and then B mode it's going to be manufactured in Poland so chest to my Polish viewers and it's going to be managed in Tehe and that was a plant in Poland for the Stellantis group and has been there since the 1970s but it's modernized and it is the Jeep Avenger will be the first battery electric vehicle to roll off its production line it is um produce it takes about 12 hours from raw metal all the way to production production ready and uh, they're producing one every 50 seconds so you're going to see a lot of these on the road top speed is limited to 150 kilometers an hour with a zero to 100 speed of nine seconds zero to a time of nine seconds and then you have zero to 50 um kilometers an hour in 4.1 seconds there is a mobile app as well for the Jeep Avenger. You can check the status of the vehicle, check the battery state of charge, and turn on and turn off air conditioning, heating, or cooling your vehicle. The, uh, the on the Avenger itself, it's uh, greater than 30% recycled metals are used. 10% of green plastic materials are made up of sustainable sources. Uh, the Jeep Avenger, after its on-road life is complete, will be 85% recyclable and 95% recover and the, and the re and re recoverable for 95%. Front wheel drive, it will be coming in an all wheel drive version. And I definitely think you should have an, a, a Jeep Avenger in an all wheel drive version. The new all-electric motor was improved, uh, because of the new all-electric motor, it's improved its range by 5%. The new battery gave another 12% benefit, and then 5% was more was obtained by working on the aerodynamics, the gear ratios, and the tires. At the higher speeds, I found that there was a small bit of wind noise coming off the wing mirrors, but otherwise, very quiet, very smooth. Reminds me very much of the Maka. in how quiet it is and the market was extremely quiet i suppose we're just getting used to all of these electric vehicles and how quiet they are and how you have to really insulate the sound from the cabin because you can pick up on everything the you can definitely feel that the suspension has been tuned so they've tuned the suspension and so what they've done is they've increased the damping force by 20 percent and by that doing so they've reduced the vertical body acceleration by 20 percent the body roll by 12 percent and the pitch acceleration by 15 percent it has a 12 10.5 meter turning circle it's a 115 kilowatt motor corresponding to 156 p uh, horsepower 260 newton meters of torque with a heat pump as standard on the upper level trims you're getting a reversing camera and those four trims are the avenger trim the longitude the altitude and the summit trim that's the top of the range it features everything including led headlights taillights ambient lights level 2 autonomous driving the 360 degree parking sensors and the rear view camera that head up display or sorry the um there is a head up display available but that driver display that 10.25 inch driver display really nice uh, really clear lots of information on there the the cruise control the uh, adaptive cruise control uh, what power level you're at what battery level you're at the navigation is in the middle of it really good Hopefully you've enjoyed my review of the Jeep Avenger. Second time looking at it on the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Like the video, leave a comment, and remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.